Coming up this week on Geek Gamer Weekly, we talk about the latest in technology and gaming, as well as the latest in movies. Okay, we review some movie trailers and we talk about them and get ready for the cease and desist orders that we're going to receive. Geek Gamer Weekly is next. This is Geek Gamer Week, episode 233, recorded on Sunday, March 24th, 2013. Cease and desist. Geek Gamer Weekly is brought to you by Personas, makers of the Studio Live 1602, which packs superior audio quality, performance, and integrated software, including remote control, into a small, affordable package. For more information, visit personas.com. Hey everybody, welcome again to another edition of Geek Gamer Weekly. This is the uber high definition podcast for geeks and gamers. You're right over there. I'd like to welcome you here to the show. It is Sunday, March 24th, 2013, episode number 233. My name is Chase Nunes and joining me this week is Joseph Albee. Hey, Joe. Hi. <laughs> You're first. <laughs> <laughs> Did someone push the wrong button? No, no, no. You're first, man. You I, was, first. Yeah. I was looking at my laptop because <laughs> I was typing. John was sleeping over there, so I'm going to you first. Oh, oh okay. All right. Jo- uh, How's it jo- going? Good, man. Joe's from the Oregon Bureau of Technology, Gaming Research and Development, wearing his trusty Razer headset. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Hey, is that USB or is that a mini, Jack? No, it's uh, it's audio jack, and then it, it's actually uh, it's actually a four band plug, so you can use it like with a cell phone that has the microphone, because it has a, you can you can do this little. I mean, we did this this discussion at E three about this thing, and yeah. um, but it comes with this adapter, so you go from the four band with uh microphone integrated to two regular plugs, so you you can use it with a computer. Very cool, okay, actually. So I th- I'm thinking about trying this with some of my other headsets, see if they work with uh, uh, if I can get them to work with the computer with the microphone, some of my cell phone ones. But yeah. Joe, you're doing good. Yeah, doing good. Sweet man. Scott came back from a land party over the weekend. Oh, cool. We'll talk about that later. Good times. Yeah. Also joining us this week is here in the studio, Mr. John Kessler. Hey, John, how are you? Uh, uh, are we doing a show? Yeah, we started. Yes, we have. Okay, I'm awake mm. now. How are you feeling? Just ducky. Cool, man. There you I go, see Carrie. you got not one but two Pepsis next to you. I always have two Pepsis. God, man. <laughs> You know the funny. Everybody thinks I'm a Pepsi fiend. This is the only day of the week that I uh, drink Pepsi. I don't have. There's no Pepsi at all in my fridge at home. Really, this is the only time. As long as I always stop at the my, John. My there's, a, there's a there's there's this place called uh, Costco. Yeah, I don't know if you've heard of it. I I think I have a Costco card in my. We wallet. can go to Business Costco actually and get yourself yeah. a nice case of those bottles. Save yourself some money. No, because then I'll just drink them. <sighs> yep. All right. All right. So here's the deal, you guys. Uh, so I, you know, we do the same kind of show every once, you know, every while, every week, where we uh, sit down, we talk about the news of gaming, we talk about the news of geek and technology, then we have a picks of the week, and then we get out of here. And you know, it's great and all, it's it's all fun to do. However, it gets boring. It gets really boring after a while because. Obviously, you have your methods of getting that information anyway, right? I mean, why do you need us to report that to you when you already know it? Because you're smart, you're bright, you know what's going on. And um, so this week I decided to not pull any stories. I don't have one. None at all. Uh, I mean, I, I already edit the shows and I produce the shows, make them sound good and put it all together thanks to Personas and our awesome list of donors that are out there that help contribute to the show so this week i decided to put upon john and joe falby Mm -hmm. to bring some ideas and thoughts to the table and in the meantime what i'm going to do is i'm going to push the buttons to switch the cameras back and forth and i'm going to open up phone lines now we've not done this on the show Oh God! In a long, 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 long time. So let me uh, let me do this first because I forgot to um, rename this lower third shot because it's not going to work. 
if I don't have it named correctly. I can't put it up on the screen. See, that's how uh, prepared I am this week. So here we go. There it is, lower third three. All right, so here's the deal. I just threw it up on the screen there. So if you're watching us live on this Sunday evening, right now it's 27 minutes after 6 in the evening here on the West Coast. So if you want to call in, you can. There's two, minute, uh, two different ways you can do it. You could Skype us by using the name Geek Gamer TV, or you can call us, area code 256-293-4488. That's 256-293-GGTV. If you call us during the show, I'll just ask you who you are, where you're from, and what you want to talk about. Uh, really, anything geeky or gaming-related is, is fine. Uh, if you want to ask a personal question of John... The duck man himself, Mr. Ducky, you can probably do that. I don't know if he'll answer or not, but uh, we'll have some fun. So while we're waiting for calls to come in, we'll this week we'll just kind of fly off the cuff and have some fun off and uh, hang out with you guys. I'm a little curious as to how we got a two five six area code because that's <laughs> northern that's northern Alabama. <laughs> that's northern <laughs> Alabama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't even I didn't look it up. Yeah, yeah. I, I was I, just I, looking I, for a phone number that had GGTV in it. I don't. I don't magic. I, I'm not a area code um, like junkie mag, magician or something. Yeah, I, I yeah. just Google searched it. So, well, yeah. there we got a, a so two five. Good. We got a two five six area code uh, because it was one of the few numbers that I could find that had GGTV in it. Oh, oh, okay. And it had GGTV in the last four digits, which was really good. Which is really what I really wanted. So, yeah, it used to be a fax a long time ago, but we switched it over to a voice number. Hmm. So, all right. Since we're while we're waiting for calls and people are trying to figure out how to actually pick up a phone and dial, John, what's our first story this week? What are we talking about? We're talking about we're talking about um, <laughs> the wow, fact that wow, uh, way to go. Yeah, we're well, having a we got nothing. We got no. Wow. Yeah, you know, that's the story of the night. Is we don't do, have any stories. Do we? Do we? Do we want to go straight to ga- to a gaming story? Because we could talk about a gaming story. Come on, John, talk about Eve real quick. Um, yeah, there you go. There actually, you, go. you know, there's a site that, uh, and I'm bringing it up here now. Um, that, uh, um, am I? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, John. Come. Come on. It was born out of. Um, oops, and I screwed that up. Yeah, I got to. I got to. Yeah, hold on. <laughs> Come on, John. Yeah, there we go. Uh, I'm gonna throw this in IRC. This site was uh, born out of uh, Eve stuff, um, and it's branched out, and they uh, cover they cover a lot of gaming stuff. Um, pretty. Um, Carrie, why are you calling me not a true Eve player? Come on, it's not a spreadsheet. You, you, hear, you hear that, Joe? Do you hear that? What Joe the crickets or yeah? yeah uh, I was gonna crickets. say, do you hear yeah. them? <laughs> yep. Do you hear them? I hear them. Everybody's logging off IRC right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um. So the the it's Matani. It's been a great com. few podcasts. It's it's kind of sad it had to end like this. Yep. Uh, sorry. <laughs> two hundred twenty three episodes and it's all over. It's it's or two hundred thirty three. It's we're <laughs> all done. I, everybody's we're ran done. out of content. We used up all the content on the internet. It's done. Mm. There's no new content. <laughs> Come on, John. What? This is all on you. The show's on you. You got to have an opening story here. It's not a story, though. John, you don't realize how uh, much hard work I pour into this show it every is. week. Yep. It's tough, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> all I'm asking is for one story. One story. Just one. one Just go to comonews.com. Go to the text section. That's what you usually do. No, I don't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it is. We all know. We it. all yeah. know. Oh, shoot. Yeah. yeah. All right, Joe. Joe, you Save turn. us. S- save him, Joe. Well, if it's gonna go to me, I'm gonna go to an Apple story. Okay, and Fair uh, enough. the one I'm gonna the one I'm gonna pick is the only one that really hit kind of big this weekend, and it it was surprising because it broke on Saturday. Is Apple acquired a company called Wi-Fi Slam, which does indoor GPS? Okay, it's just kind of weird. But anyway, they um uh the idea behind the the company or the way the the soft the system works is it'll use Wi-Fi signals inside of an area and they map it out and know exactly where the APs are and how strong it is and uses relative signaling to find out exactly where you are inside of a building, kind of like GPS does, only, you know, on a much smaller scale. And uh, they acquired them over the weekend. It cost them $20 million. It was started uh, originally by an ex-Google software intern, Joseph Huang. Uh, Huang? Huang? I don't know. 
terrible Chinese name. Um, and uh, it, kind of a cool idea. I, nobody's of always, whenever Apple acquires something, nobody's really clear what they're going to do with it right away. But hopefully uh, we'll see some kind of interesting use from this. And um, and I, I just think it's kind of cool. I'd, 20, I'd love 20, to see million, indoor... 20 million for Apple is uh, is just change. Really, right? Right, yeah. That I mean, that was that's like um you know when you when you pull uh when you pull a, a pack of dollar bills out of your pocket <laughs> and like a, a one or a couple quarters falls on the ground, that's exactly what this is for Apple. It costs yeah, them they, more money to go and pick up that dollar than just to yes. leave it on the ground. Right, exactly. Right. It, they were they were probably like, Well, we don't really want this, but uh oh well, you know, no big deal. Uh so that but that was the, the kind of the interesting news that dropped on Saturday. The other interesting thing that happened this week was uh, Adobe's uh chief tech officer has moved over to Apple. Um Kevin Lynch uh has been at Adobe for quite a while and he moved over there um just earlier this week I think or last week and uh he's going to be over there working on um he'll be taking a position on uh, Apple's executive team but it's not really clear what he's going to be doing. So hopefully he'll be pushing some of that Adobe creative software stuff into Apple or maybe making Retina or Aperture, sorry, making Aperture a competitive uh, photo editing suite or, you know, piece of software, kind of like Photoshop is. You know, speaking, of a, speaking of a bad Apple story. So, Uh-oh. <laughs> so you probably heard about this, Joe. Apple uh-huh. uh, launched off a two-factor authentication. They did, yes. Yeah, they did. Which is good. I, I, which actually, is, I actually turned it on on my phone right away as soon which as I is heard a, about it. Which is a very good idea. Uh, I use it for Google. And uh, mm-hmm. it's a good idea because there was a security hole that was leaked out. Now, Apple has fixed this, the I Forgot system, which basically allowed yep. your Apple ID to be compromised just by knowing your user's email address and date of birth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, Real that simple. came about, I believe that was discovered after the two-factor was put in. So it's not clear if it was part of an unintended result of adding two-factor or if it has always been there. But I have a feeling if it's always been there, people would have noticed it earlier. So I think it's a. it happened as a someone clicked the wrong button when they enabled two-factor. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, no, they took the, uh, the so they took the iPad, the I forgot system down for oh, about four or five hours. Uh, I think it was Thursday. And when they brought it back up, it, it didn't have that problem anymore. Yeah. So, so yes, John. But uh, I, the the I, I actually I, think we should talk about the two factor that Apple's doing because that that two factor works really interestingly. Is it different um, than what Google does with their authentication? Very. It, it, well, it's sort of like what Google does in that it's it's based on a cell phone or an SMS device. But what the way it works is, it uses in the case of iPhones it, or or iPads, it uses the notification system built into the iPad or oh. into the iOS. So, like when I've tried using it, you know how with Google you have to open the app and you gotta you gotta look at your code and then you gotta type it in. Right. Yeah. With with Apple's, if you have the phone and you have it unlocked, it just shows up on your screen. So you enter your username and password, and then when you hit enter, by the time you've looked, you're looking at your phone. That's the code cool. for you to use is already up on the screen. So it's a push notification. And yeah, it's a push notification with the actual code for it. I was really amazed. I was why, like, why can't Google do that? It would it would seem that it'd be real easy for Google to do. All they would have to do is just enable a push notification where you get a of the code and that's it. Well, Google's system is more like classic two factor where the device doesn't have to be so your Google uh, your Google activator doesn't actually have to be on a network in order for it to work. It's independent. The the Apple system, I think your phone has to be connected to it. I mean, obviously it has to be connected to a data network in order for it to work. So it's not really true two factor in the classical sense of two factor. Hmm. This is more like um trusted device sort of thing so if you don't have a trusted device it's not going to let you in even if you know the username and password whereas two-factor the the trusted device is is not doesn't have to be network attached it's it has a a special a special algorithm that sort of thing and i have i have devices like that for work as well where you push a button on it you get a number you type into the number the device is network attached it has a an algorithm that's running on it and they run the same algorithm on their server and the seed determines what actual code you get at what time uh-huh. so google's going classic style apple's kind of going with a new style but it's both two fa- it's both two factor and it, it both works really really well and if you're if you have a google account and you're not using two factor you should probably sign up for it same thing with you know if you have an apple account you might as well sign up for it because it's it's really easy it, it's really mm-hmm. easy to use and um you know what it could really save you if you ever had a problem john you should right yeah i mean because i mean like say for example you lost your phone 
And now when, when would I ever lose my phone? I'm just saying. I mean, let's say you lose <laughs> your phone. Okay. How would I lose it? Um, uh, I, uh, I don't know. Maybe the, you put the it bigger on your car. the bigger issue rather than losing a phone, it would be, it would be if um, if somebody if if your password was on an account or on on a system where their password logs and their usernames got leaked, and you were using that for, um, let's say your your Google Play account, which you have know. to have. You have to. You have an Android phone. You have a Google Play account. Um, <laughs> I don't have one. Yes, you do. Yes, I, uh, <laughs> lies. If, if that login and password was leaked for that, then um, somebody would be able to basically log into your Google Play account and buy anything they wanted using it. And they could put it on whatever device they wanted. They could send it to your phone. They could download it. They could put it on their phone, whatever. And uh, having a two-factor, though, would eliminate that issue because they would have to have your cell phone or they'd have to have some other device running that two-factor authenticator in order to access access your Google Play account. Does that make sense? Makes perfect sense. John, does that I make sense it. to you? Yeah. Well, what, can you can you explain that in layman's terms to some of the people that are out there, John? I'd love to see how... Yeah, uh, yeah. could you please do that? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe, maybe use, use some of your, your service writer expertise at making a subject really, a, a relatively complicated subject, easy to understand. Yeah, can you please do that, John? I'd love um, to yeah. hear your expertise in this regard. Well, if you sign up on the site, they give you a device, you get a key, you log in, it's secure. Mr. John Kessler, everybody. There you go. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> Can I, did I break it down enough? How about a gaming story? Sort of. I, I want to talk. I want to talk a gaming story. <laughs> no, no. Okay. I'm going to go all over the map this episode. I really don't care. All right, no, um, I'm good with that. But I'm now, actually, that. Joe, had you seen the leak yeah. that, link that I threw in IRC? Scroll up uh, a little bit. Uh, I, what, what? Is it a BBC News yeah. one? I don't know if you had seen. Was that it Como article. News? No, it was a BBC one. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, had you seen that article? I hadn't seen this article, oh. but I mean. No, it was that's, that's a that's a little bit of a grasp to say the whole internet was. All right, that's interesting. Can we go back to gaming, please? No. All right, let's do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's go back. To uh, this was announced at the Midwest Gaming Classic, and and I think this is a perfect gift uh, for John Kessler. I really want to get this for him. Uh, and this is the Retron Five console. This was revealed at, like I said, the Midwest Gaming Classic. <laughs> This console will support Nintendo, Famicom, which was Japanese Nintendo, SNES, Genesis, including the Mega Drive, Game Boy Advance with Game Boy and color support all over HDMI with controller ports for uh, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, and Genesis controllers, as well as its own Bluetooth controllers. Now, John... Mm -hmm. You have no way of looking at this article because I didn't give you the link. Yes. How much do you think this console would cost you? Two hundred fifty bucks. Two hundred fifty dollars. My guess. now now Joe probably was googling it as I was searching, but uh, oh, I wasn't googling it, but I saw the article earlier today. Uh, oh, okay, so you already know how much it's going to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Less than a hundred bucks, John. Less, Less than a hundred dollars, you'll be able to pick this sucker up. But now, what's it going to cost to acquire if someone did not have any retro games to be thrown in that? Oh, my God. Really? Really, John? Really? <coughs> someone like myself. It has no eBay, retro eBay, Craigslist, Chase, maybe Joe. Chase, Joe. <laughs> the bank? Ch Chase? No, I have oh. games. Oh, I have yes. loads of games. I know you do. I was joking. I, but someone that didn't know you guys. Had is you know to buy this and then try to go out and find the some target games. market for for people for this console isn't for people who don't know about games and where to find them. It's for people who have these collections, and not only maybe they have a, a higher end television system, mm -hmm. and they don't have an old two TV anymore. It would be much simpler to have an HDMI, just plug it in. It'll upscale your games. I want. I'm really curious though on how well the upscaling work works. But I would love something like this where I can bring it in here into the studio. Mm -hmm. And it would work great for uh, capturing games, because right now I have to use different adapters yeah. to bring the stuff in. If I can just get this one console mm -hmm. and have HDMI out, and it does a pretty decent job without any loss of, mm -hmm. because some of these upscaling things uh, make the game sound or, or look worse than worse than they used to be, <laughs> if that makes any <laughs> sense. But John, I think this would be perfect the for you. The pixels are so huge. 
No, but I think this would be perfect for you. It would. What? 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 If he doesn't have any classic cartridges, why would it be perfect for him? Yeah. No, it'd be perfect for John to get uh, in touch with the old school of of g- playing games. Like I would, uh, I would get him some carts, and uh, mm. I know he could do emulation, but it's not the same thing. It's not the same thing in sitting down. And, you know, I don't know. Somebody, somebody uh, out there is going to complain because a Bluetooth controller is going to have too much lag. Oh, <laughs> hogwash! I well, no, I'm I agree with you, Chase. But somebody out there is going to complain. I guess, I guess. But hey. You know, it's not so bad. Uh, there'll be an option to render audio at a higher output frequency, resulting in smoother and cleaner audio output. There'll be uh, uh, safe state supported, overclocking is supported, all these neat little extras. Hey, is it going to? I wonder if it's well. going to have the. You know how a lot of the emulators have the um, the Game Genie codes you can put in when you oh. launch a game? I wonder if they're going to do that on this. Um, I don't know. It doesn't say. That'd be cool. But I mean, uh, I think someone mentioned in our chat room. I want to say, yeah, Math- Matthew uh, mentioned that you can just use a Raspberry Pi for emulation for thirty-five bucks. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you 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 have to know that you're you own the games you're playing. On. Right. Yeah. I mean, this. I mean, that's can... the thing with this is if it like I have a I have a a box out out back somewhere. And I think it's out on the porch that has all of my original NES games and and a few of my old SNES games and. If I can just drop them into this box and be playing on a on a TV with with uh, HDMI, that's perfect. Yep. You know, no muss, no fuss, no having to l- you know lurk lurk through the dark underbelly of the internet trying to find <laughs> game ROMs. Um, I think this is great. The only question I have on stuff like this, and I, I love these things, but the the big question I have on stuff like this is, when's the N sixty four gonna be at the point where they can do these? Because oh. I have a lot of N sixty four games, I'd really love to break. Isn't back it twenty out. years? Doesn't have. <laughs> what's the like? Uh, I don't know. The, what what year did the SNES come out? Um, uh, I don't know. Uh, let me see. Um, the SNES came out in nineteen uh, North America ninety one. So North America came out August of ninety one. In Japan, it came out November of ninety. So, so yeah, it it might be twenty years. Because didn't we start seeing those right around um, right around 2010? We started yeah, we seeing. Did. Yep. So, what year did the uh, uh, N64 come out? Because one thing I want to do is I want to. Mm-hmm. First off, uh, I'm in the uh, the stages of finally cleaning up my garage. I'm, I'm, it's a very long process because I've it's it's pretty messy. But what I want to do is I want to have a, a weekend. So it's going to be over the summer where it's you know, the weather's decently and nice is I want to do a uh, Starship Artemis, a dedicated Starship Artemis event. Yes. So the, it will not be a LAN party. It will be dedicated for Artemis because the garage will be laid out in an Artemis spaceship fashion mm-hmm. and classic gaming weekend. So that when I mean classic, I mean, I'm talking about consoles. So I pull down my consoles or hopefully this would be out by then and hook it up and uh, we'll play like some Contra and Mario and just some old old school stuff. I think that'd be a lot of fun. That's why this appeals to me. And then John can play. play what are you doing over there? I kicked something under the table. I was looking to see what I was keep kicking. Were you kicking my dog? No, it was actually some cables down there. Okay. So Ooh. a few a few of us looked it up on the on the uh, on the on wiki on the wiki on oh. the Wikipedia. Okay. Uh, since I mean, if we can use the Google, we can use the Wikipedia, right? Um. The N64 came out in 96. The okay. Sega Saturn, though, came out in 94 in Japan, 95 in North America. So as early as next year, we could maybe see these things for Sega Saturn. So Saturn's going to be really tough. awesome. I think ta- Saturn would be t- tough, though. Why? Well, because it would be the first CD-based uh, thing that uh, Retron would be doing. Well, I, I, I don't know. I mean, will we see it, though... So if they open up the the creation of consoles, or if con, you know consoles that can play these games are opened up, maybe we're not going to see a Sega a Sega Saturn as a spinning disc device. Maybe we'll see an official legal emulator. Um, oh for yeah, PC. that's true. You know that sort of thing. Um, I don't know. That could be really cool though. But either way, uh, I would love a device that could that you know had a had a disc drive on there. You could throw your Sega Saturn disc in there. You could so throw PlayStation 1 disc in there. You could throw a whole bunch of different, you know, different different oh, types God, of Oh, God, I remember uh, the games. Saturn with the dual processors. I mean, when that thing, when the Saturn mm-hmm. came out, I, I had a I had a Saturn. I loved it. I loved it for many, uh, many different games. 
Uh, one of my favorites was World Series Baseball 95. Great baseball game. A lot of fun. I mean, and when I go back and look on YouTube of some of the gameplay, it's just like it makes me cringe. I was like, wow, I really loved that game. Uh, but yeah. See, John has no idea. I mean, John is older than us, and he has no idea. I mean, he's just been playing Eve. Mm-hmm. John, when did you actually get involved in gaming? Um, it's like three and a half um, years now, right? <laughs> 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 no, actually, I didn't really get in. No, I, I, I... pre pong. <laughs> no, um, was it actually, chisel and stone, John? Actually, no. It was actually it would have been more right about the time the uh, beta was out for Return to Castle Wolfenstein. That's when I really started playing. Return to Castle Wolfenstein. So that was only what, fifteen years so the, ago? Yeah, and playing the beta, you know, online with that, playing on dial up. Um, other than that was playing uh, Diablo two. Okay. Um Yeah, so it's so uh yeah, Wolfenstein came out on uh, North America in two thousand one. Return oh, okay. to Castle Wolfenstein. So twelve years ago. Yeah. That was close. Yeah. So yeah, so I mean all the early console stuff. Late no, late two thousand one. Did not November. have that. Um, uh, I, I mean, I remember playing, you know, I played a little bit of Zelda from my brother-in-law had that on the Nintendo 64. Okay. And that's about it. And maybe like some tank back in, um, 84, 83. Should, should we talk about, uh, PAX East at all? I mean, it did happen this past weekend. We weren't there. It, it wrapped up. Uh, some of our friends were there that they decided not to tell us that, you know, ask us if we wanted to go and help them cover the event. But I'm not bitter. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> Should we talk about it, though? I mean, what's to say? It's just PAX in the East. Anything big announced out of, out, out, out of there that you know about, Joe? I, I, uh, I, 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 I couldn't really find much of anything. I don't think there was a whole lot. Um, that came out of uh, PAX East, um, but I really don't remember. Okay, I wasn't following it really closely because I. I mean, wasn't John, there. John. See if John was uh, keeping an eye on on stories, which I know John usually does, because he always keeps an eye on on gaming stories. Mm-hmm. But John, I don't know if you knew, but Eve Online Odyssey expansion yes. was announced at PAX East 2013. Really? Yeah, did you know that? Yeah, I've seen the article that, on um, Eve's site. It's pretty I'm, vague on what they're. I'm just going to throw this out there, but you know, at the beginning of the show, John, when when everything everything kind of pointed at you as looking for an intro story, mm-hmm. that would have been a good one. But well, to me, that's a non-story. Sorry. Why? Please tell us. They Be- announced an expansion pack for Eve. Yeah. Yeah. How is this a non-story? Because it's vague. It's yeah. We're gonna we're gonna redistribute some stuff, and yes, and it's gonna be awesome. Thank you. There's nothing in that story. I'm sorry. I've read it like two or three, you know, I've read it. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I've You're, already read it. I've read it like two or three times, times and I couldn't going, find anything. Yeah, I was like going, there's nothing there. We're going to redistribute some uh, stuff. Yeah, through the, uh, the, the game, you know, the skate, you know. It's like, oh. The you. pictures look good. Yeah. Is there anything anything in here? I mean, what? so what's the premise? You, you So you have to, see, this is why I don't get this. <laughs> So I'm looking at it right now. It says here, Battle for Kadari Prime. And there's some very nice looking pictures here. And there's some um, nice big ships. Actually, so this is what this is on the planet. This is. This, yeah. No, actually. Huh? Well, see, I'm confused. Okay. They did have a. Actually, they had an event on Friday. Okay. I haven't found any good information on it other than off that Matani site that I linked earlier. Um, but they haven't really had any official news out from CCP to really link to. And I hadn't really found anything too much. I mean, I, okay, you've got this, but I don't even know if that's from that. It, it says it is. Okay. Well, that's... And everything online is true, so... Yeah, that's, that must be it. No, but, you know, I found out about it Friday evening looking at the Matani site while I was waiting for stuff to update at work while I was <laughs> twiddling my thumbs. <laughs> I mean, this is like... 6 30 7 p.m friday night sitting at work and i finally looked at matani site and i'm going oh man i totally missed that but uh they had a uh you know a, a ccp sponsored event with a big fight at kaldari prime with the dust guys playing on the planet you know uh, what we really need to be talking about what you know the you know joe joe this 
Joe, this should have been the top story, in my what? opinion. This this next thing I'm going to talk about should have been the top story. Okay. DuckTales is coming back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that actually was pretty big news. That was... Yeah. Did you watch the video for it? No, no. Is there a video? Oh, there's a, there's a gameplay video. Yeah. Oh, uh, let me find it real quick, but can you talk about it real quick? Um... So, so well, what was what was officially announced? Okay, so officially they announced DuckTales remastered. Uh, let me uh, let me get a little more info on it here. Okay. Um, basically, it's uh, it's uh, made by Capcom, who made the original, of course, and it's going to be. Um, here's a uh, let me post this uh, on the IRC real quick. Um, it's going to be basically the original game, and it's redone with modern graphics for modern platforms, stuff like that. And uh, it's a full remake of the original game. They actually brought in some of the original uh, sound artists and stuff like that to re-record and all kinds of stuff like that. It's going to be coming out on the Wii U, PSN, and the Xbox Live Arcade for fifteen bucks. All right, so and I think it's due later this year. So we're going to get a cease and desist on this, but I, I really don't care. Probably. Here's, here's the uh, here's the reveal trailer uh, for this game, uh, which we'll show. Um, how about now? Yeah. <laughs> so that. Can you not see that? I can't see it. I can't. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Is this intro for uh, Star Trek? No. Oh. No, this is DuckTales. I was joking with the this, the music. The game taught me everything about a genre that launched my career. I love the next the next quote is my favorite though. Please stop emailing me for a quote. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mm. Sing along. Life is like a hurricane here in Duckburg. Lake scars, blazers, aeroplanes. It's a duck blur. Mine's all a now sing it. I'll right here. Everybody! DuckTales! You're on your own in that chase. Everybody Come on, everybody! <laughs> DuckTales! <laughs> Woo! Look at this. This looks great! Yeah, it does, doesn't oh. it? Danger! We are going to get some cease and desist! Woo! <laughs> Well, I, I I guess if you're out of op, you know ideas for making new games, just go back and remaster the old ones. Hey, come on! Hollywood's been doing that for ages. Yeah. Just ducky. <laughs> <laughs> Available summer 2013 on everything. It will be just yeah. ducky. It will be well, just it, uh, uh, everything to Capcom means the three main consoles. Uh, so Wii U, PSN, and Xbox Live Arcade. Hopefully, we'll see it on other platforms. It'd be. Uh, it seems like it'd be a really good device to port onto on the on the tablets, Four. iOS, and Android. Uh, who cares if it's on the PlayStation Four? Should, um, should I continue the cease and desist uh, route? Well, uh, what are you going to play next? <laughs> you know what? Capcom Capcom <laughs> might not be an issue, but it's uh, Disney I, that Disney. I'm worried about. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. All right. I don't know if they're gonna if they're gonna freak out about it. Capcom, I don't think will care that much. But if you played something from EA, it'd be like thirty seconds. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> it'd be instant. Yeah. Actually, I've uh the DRM City episode from last week. Mm -hmm. Uh, I got uh, uh I I tried to enable advertising and I had to uh, prove that we were a news show because yeah. Now I don't know if you so have you have you seen the Star Trek Into Darkness trailer, John? No, I have not. And Joe, have you seen the Star Trek Into Darkness trailer? No. Okay. So, uh, wait, I think I may what? have. I don't. Know. Okay, so Star Trek Into Darkness is the next edition from J.J. Abrams. Right. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to really screw this up. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> go ahead, no, John. Actually, you know, why you, you would think that. I guess if we weren't bashing it, they should like let us well, show no, it because can, then it would be you know we'd be at, you know put you know putting their stuff out there. Well, we can. I mean, that's the, the well that well that's the thing though is they don't know whether we're bashing it or not because it's just a bot. Oh, that's screen. true. That is true. So, so screw the bot. Uh, four days ago, pretty much. So four days ago, the the international trailer came out, 
for Star Trek Into Darkness. Mm -hmm. So, since you guys have not seen this, you guys will get a sneak peek here. Sneak. Only 4 million people have seen it so far. And yeah, uh, Chase, what are you doing? I'm, I'm going to share it with you guys real Chase, quick. what are you doing? What, what are you talking about? Sneak again. What? Nothing. What do you mean? Nothing. It, it, you totally lost it. Yeah. Who, what, when, where? Why? Uh, yeah, never mind. All right, let me play this. I'm going to play this now. You think your world is safe. It is an illusion. Enjoy these final moments of peace. By now, all of you have heard what happened in London. The man who did it is one of our top agents. Is that Robocop? <clears throat> Robocop did it. That looked like Robocop. It's a crime I cannot forgive. None of you are safe. Clear the road! Have I got your attention now? This could just be the beginning. I request permission to go after him. Starfleet is not about vendetta, Kirk. Maybe it should be, sir. Jim, you're not actually going after this guy, are you? I have no idea what I'm supposed to do. I only know what I can do. We're gonna do this, we gotta do it now! We will not fit. We'll fit, we'll fit! So she I said... We fit. I am not sure that hey, qualifies. <laughs> Watched you oh, I should be playing this on the other computer. I will make you answer. I'll do that next time. Because we're getting eight yeah. frames per second. Oh. Yeah. You have no idea what you have done. I will walk over your cold corpses. Let's go! We're outgunned. Outnumbered. So we come out shooting. I am better at what? Everything. Ooh. That's what she said. Hey, those ships aren't supposed to be in the atmosphere. Well, that one, yeah. That one. That That's one. what happens when they come into the atmosphere. All right, so there you go. There's there's the trailer, and that I, uh, sorry, there was really bad frame rate. I will uh, play that out on the other computer. Uh, next again. time. Not again, <laughs> no. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so John Kessler, what'd you think? That's cool. All right, that's it? Yep. The ships don't fit in the atmosphere. What? They, they crash into the planet when that happens. Okay, so, so Joe, and what'd you think? Uh, I, it looks like an exciting movie, but it doesn't look like a Star Trek movie. What What's that supposed to mean? I, I don't think Gene Roddenberry would have ever allowed something like that to happen in his What's that creation. supposed to mean? Explain on that. Well, okay, so Gene Roddenberry's vision of Star Trek as it, as it originally stood was sort of uh, um, civilized, utopian, that sort of environment. And, and I don't think he would like the direction that... Abrams is taking it now. Oh, I see what you're saying. So, especially because Abrams has said that. I mean, he's publicly said that when people when he, when people think of Star Trek in the future, they, that he wants them to think of them. And I don't think anybody who thinks Star Trek should ever think of J.J. Abrams. I think they should think of Gene Roddenberry. Well, I do as well. I do. So, but I mean, I don't. I don't. Yeah, I don't think it would be. I'm not a fanboy of Star Trek. Trust me, that's not the case. But I, I don't think Gene Roddenberry would would like it as it, as it the direction that it's going. Now, in in the Star Trek movies of the past, um, there hasn't really been any real blood and gore, has there? I mean, there's been people dying and killed and stuff, but blood and gore? What Klingons and knives in the backs and ki Kirk killing son or son? Yeah, yeah but yeah, but did they really there, show you know oh, blood yeah. splat? I mean, oh the, yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. just I don't remember. You know, I I remember Kirk's son dying. Red or, shirts being, all the, the time. One of the John. <laughs> one of the creep one of the creepiest things I I remember from the Star Trek movies was watching uh, the the thing crawl into those guys' ears in oh, Han. Star Trek. Yeah. Yes, but I, yeah. But, um, but so I mean. Yeah, it, it there definitely has been has been that kind of thing in in Star Trek. There's no question about that. I just think that Abrams is taking it. He's he's turning it into action movies, and Star Trek. I think at its base was supposed to be a um, 
a little more psychological, a little bit more intelligent than just let's blow everything up. Oh, Maldek, uh, remember in Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country, the floating blood from the Klingons. Yeah, but you saw floating yeah. blood, but you didn't see it actually. No, you shot. Out. You 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 got. Yeah, you the guy would sh get saw shot. The, saw the guys get shot and yeah. blood come out of them okay. as they were floating away. Yeah. Now, but when I'm talking so, blood and gore, I'm thinking of like uh, Kill Bill blood squirting spraying out an entire room versus. Oh, I just really got, hope we don't see that because yeah. that's that was what actually got me watching those movies because it was so ridiculous. It wasn't gory anymore. It was just absurd. <laughs> well, so what you guys are trying to say is you'd rather see this in a um, in a Lego sense. That's what you're telling me, right? If it was more family friendly, you'd probably watch it, right, John? No, no, I think you would. I, I really think no. you would. I, oh, I mean, no, actually, no. I, I would, I, I'm just saying no, for, no, what, for oh what Joe was oh talking about. John, John, what? John, just watch. Is that guy carrying a lightsaber? No, he's, he's got a shake weight. You're wrong about that. <laughs> and you're going to get yourself and everyone under your command killed. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> how how long is it? It's a trailer. You is it the whole trailer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sweet. I totally watched You've this. You've got to be kidding. In 3D. I want to see this in 3D. This is awesome. <laughs> now, this isn't the international trailer, so we're not going to see the Lego in underwear. <laughs> oh, come on. The fact that they got floaty dust particles in the air there. Into brickness. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. <laughs> see, isn't that awesome? Totally. You would watch that. I would watch that in 3D. Yeah, see, Joe couldn't believe it was real. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't watch that. You wouldn't oh, watch come that? On. Oh, come on. No. Why? I'm, I'm on the edge watching the Star Wars movie in the first place. I'm definitely not going to watch it in Legos. <sighs> So, I don't know. I guess I, I just want to clarify. I think Star Trek is supposed to be more cerebral than what Abrams is taking it to. So, but how would you relaunch the franchise, though? I mean, what would you do? Uh, I'm not convinced that it needs to be relaunched. That it that it needed to be. Just let it die. Well, you don't have to necessarily let it die, but you don't you don't have to completely abandon all. Or, or not all, but most of the original concepts in in Star Trek to to make a reasonable show. Right, that's true. True. Now, John, you grew up on black and white Star Trek. What, I mean, what do you think about this new relaunch? Black and white Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> what do you think about it? It, you know, it it does. I don't, you know, maybe you know, it's almost like a, you know, it's a sign of the times. I, I almost, you know, the way they're they're going with it, and it is, you know, it is a different director. Well, yeah, J.J. Abrams, yeah. Mister Lost, yeah, but that's it. Yeah, that's it. Okay. I mean, it, we, things can't be the same forever. True. Right. Things do change. Yeah. Um, and people's expectations of what they want to see in a movie is going to be different compared to you know back then. Back then, it was like. Wow, you know, this is you know, like look at when Star Wars came came out. It's like, can they ma still make movies looking like they did in the original Star Wars? No. So, Joe, when they, you know, when when we see the new Star Wars seven or whatever number they're going to call it, are you worried that when Star Wars the the new version of Star Wars comes out, it's going to not live up to the expectation of what the ideal should have been? Uh, you know, I don't know. It will we'll have to see. I think the the thing that is it, that the only reason I have hope for for the future Star Wars movies is so many of the original cast is signed on 
that it hopefully it won't be terrible. Um, I don't know. You know what, though? I guess I'm, con- I'm, I'm confident in saying this. No matter what it is, it shouldn't be as bad as episode one was. <laughs> <laughs> you mean, yeah, are so- you saying Jar Jar Binks? I mean, Jar Jar Binks was the best part of episode I'm one. Not, I'm it's not sad that singling it is. out Jar Jar Binks. In fact, I feel like you are. I can't single out any part of that entire movie that was either amazing or terrible. It was just, on a whole, not very good. All the, yeah, all the new Star Wars is going to be played out by the, uh, the DuckTales cast. Another Disney special. What? I was joking about the fact yeah. that Disney's... Got Star he was Wars trying now. to link it back to the Ducktales Duck story Tales. that we did a little bit ago. Oh, uh-huh. he's he's and, trying to do a circle he's, back. He's yeah. yeah, he's kind of like you know, let's let's grab this monofilament thread that no one can see and try to pull it, and it 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 failed miserably. It broke. So, it did. Yeah. But Joe saw it though. Well, I understood, but it yeah. still wasn't very good. Sorry. Uh. <laughs> oh no, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. There's I don't have a whole lot of hope for movies in the next few years. I I. I don't know. I, I can't think of a single movie that, that has been announced and is in progress, except maybe the Arrested Development made-for-TV movie, that I'm actually really looking forward to. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me take that back. Yeah, I was going to... No, s- I'll leave it. I'll leave it there. I'll leave it there. <laughs> okay. There is a movie that I'm I'm interested in, but I'm 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 not sure about it. So, I'll just leave it there. John, are you okay over there? John. John's dying. Yeah, I'm dying. John is dying. What about on live? What about on live? What about on? Live? They're they're back. So well, not oh, really. Sorry. On live, chairman breaks the silence. He said that the stream uh, streaming game company expects great things. It's been seven months since we saw the last of on live, and uh, the new owner, his name is Gary Louder, has maintained mostly silence. He hasn't said anything, but he's uh, they said the significant developments. They have twenty six job openings as of. This uh, this writing of this article on the Verge. We've talked about on live. We've uh, we've tried to remain objective. Uh, hell, I mean, we've tried it out. I, at least I tried it out. John, did you try it out? No. Joe, did you try it out? Mm, yeah, actually, I did. Okay. Um, even with high speed internet, I I was very disappointed with it, especially on racing games. There was such a lag delay that it made games some games to play almost virtually impossible. Um, does OnLive have a future, Joe? Probably not. All right, I didn't think so. Joe? Not for me. All right, there you go. See? We talk about what's important. Yeah. Can you I actually play? think NVIDIA's grid thing is a, is a more interesting idea, but it doesn't really have an application in gaming. I think it has an application in, um, uh, in, in business that want to do 3D, you know, whether it's development or, or that sort of work. On a uh, on a network, you know, on a in a virtualized environment, I think that has more application than what anything on live is doing. If you wanted a reason not to like Origin, other than the fact it's by EA, a major vulnerability in uh, EA's Origin platform lets hackers take over PCs. No, <laughs> and the hackers are crazy, man. They take over everything. The exploit takes a mere seconds to pull off and relies on the weakness in the way Origin launches the game. Instead of opening the desired title, hackers can craft a malicious link that would instead help them to overtake the player's PC. The loophole affects PC and Mac versions of Origin and can uh, potentially impact millions of users. <sighs> you want to talk about SimCity, Joe? Uh, I, I'm, I'm beginning not to like it. Beginning not to like it? Yeah, because I like it and I hate it. Because I'm I, I don't like the fact that I'm so restricted in the geography <laughs> of my world. It's so too it's too small. You know, we had a discussion about this uh, at the land party over the weekend, and um the conclusion that we pretty much reached was if you wait about six months to a year, all this DLC will come out and it'll fix most of the problems. So how much am I gonna have to pay for a larger Geography, but twenty bucks. I don't know. That seems like a pretty major thing. Yeah, it seems like it'd be in the fifteen to twenty dollar range for a larger city area. <sighs> it's so freaking frustrating. Yeah. What? Uh, at the, actually, the conclusion we all pretty much reached was what we wanted. What SimCity fans really wanted from the from the new SimCity, the relaunch of SimCity, was SimCity Four with the new SimCity's graphics. <laughs> that's that was a, what we wanted. That's what we want. Yeah. 
Yeah, that that is really literally all we want. And um, EA has decided that that isn't what we want. They said, we "Oh want wait, there's given more." Us. Yes. Well, and maybe we'll like it. Maybe that's where I need to hack my own game and just go completely offline and play on my own. Hack the well, same. you know there but is. But then I can't uh, do any SimCity offline f- saves, though. That's the problem. Well, right? SimCity Four has a lot of uh, a lot of a, a, of a huge modding community behind it, and I know there's a lot of content available there to improve SimCity Four and, and add more content and graphics and stuff like that. But it's never going to reach the point of, you know, engine wise, where SimCity the relaunch is. But I don't know if it has the gameplay you want. That that's what you want, right? That's or you can true. just not not play it and not support EA and uh, and their um, decision making. Yeah. Well, we do have a, a Geek Gamer TV private region right now that Joe and I and I'm going to be mm-hmm. inviting one other, one other person to play on. But uh, uh oh, you guys actually bought that? Yeah. I I didn't. I did. Well, I don't. Then have, how did you get Joe involved in that statement? When? Well, Joe mm-hmm. got a copy. Oh. I have the game, but I didn't pay for oh, it. Oh, okay. Well, you didn't. Yeah. I didn't pirate it either. If that's what everybody's no, thinking. No, no. But you, the way you said it, I didn't like. You didn't own it. I didn't buy it. <clears throat> no. I'm I did a, not put money into that game. Okay. But I have the game. I'm going to remind everybody real quick. If you're watching us live on the <laughs> Sunday evening, March 24th, uh, we are taking your calls live. So if you want to call us right now while we're recording the show, mm. and uh, talk about Star Trek, Sim City. Origin or anything else geeky or gaming related before we get out of here. Your voice can be on the air. Your voice can be or, heard. Or recording. Coming movies. So for posterior. Yeah. Geek, I'm 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 actually gamer. browsing through there's a, a great list on Movie Insider of, of movies that have been announced as being in production or, or about to be in production. Well one of the and other two of the movies caught my eye. One of them is called Pete's Dragon. <laughs> All right, here's one other uh, tr- the other uh, one's called Flight of the Navigator. So here's here's the last. Oh, really? Yeah. Click on that. No, no. So here's <laughs> before we. Uh, uh, there's what? one more trailer I want you guys to see. Oh. Okay. There's one more trailer. Is it done with Legos? No, it's not done with Legos. Oh, thank oh. goodness. Damn. Uh, it's uh, here we go. Let me just play it for you guys. Check it out. It's pretty cool. The world froze a long time ago. So long ago that I can't remember the warmth of the sun. I heard the stories growing up. How the planet grew hotter as our fuel was burned. How we made towers to work the weather. When the food ran out, the lucky ones found places like this. A place where life could exist underneath the ice. But the truth is, one day, it started to snow. And it never stopped. Colony 5, this is Colony 7. Over. What's up? SOS loop from Colony 5. SOS? If anyone out there can hear this, I repeat our location, our location. A few hours ago, we received a distress signal from Colony 5. I think they're worth checking up on. We need to take care of our own bricks. They just put the whole colony at risk. That's really not your decision to make, is it? We're sending a team, and I'm leading it. Watch your step. What happened here? Not so much of a welcoming committee. We're from Colony 7. Came to help. Are they gone? Who? Is anyone else alive? Define their life. Slaughtered everybody. And they're coming here. It's the hunger. Just drove them mad. You run them straight to us. So there it is. It's hmm. called The Colony. It's uh, actually due out in uh, theaters in about three weeks or so. Um, hmm. I saw this. It's not... It, 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 at first, I thought it was you know your typical zombie movie. 
but it just seems like it's they've as you heard Lawrence Fishburne said they've gone mad they've gone to plaid yeah they're not quite zombies it's but, uh it's 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 reavers on earth is that is that what that is I guess I, I don't know but yeah. uh on first on first look what do you what do you think John interesting would you see it um, people in our in the chat room are saying it's totally private Hudson <laughs> they're everywhere man they're everywhere <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna get us man well yeah, it's a it's an alien meets zombie. Good one, I don't think it's that. zombies though. I just think it's humans gone mad. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You know, it's I'd probably watch it on on DVD. Game over, man. Game over. Game over. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead, John. Go ahead. I'm done. All right, Joe. Joe. Would I watch it? Yeah. On uh, DVD. Based <laughs> on that. Based on that. I might. I rarely watch movies in theater anymore, so probably not. So what I was thinking is one Sunday a month. So we already we already dedicating a, a Sunday to to pinball, one of my loves, and I know Joe's starting to love the hobby a little bit more. Just like as I drink from my Carl's Jr. cup, brought to you by Carl's Jr. Um, I think I want to dedicate a Sunday a month to um. Real geeky stuff, so movies, books, games, still include games and tech, of course, but kind of get more, I don't know, just more open and, 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 and just kind of freestyling it, if you will. I don't know if you guys like this t- style of show or not. That's why I want your feedback. So if you liked this style of show and you want to see more of this kind of style of show, send us a note or an email. The email address is weekly at geekgamer.tv. That's weekly at geekgamer.tv. Uh, we'd love to know what you guys think. Uh, if you like it or if you just want us to go back to our normal just talking about geek stories and gaming stories, that'd be fine too. As always, you can head over uh, to our website, which is at geekgamer.tv. Uh, there you can find all of our previous shows of Geek Gamer Weekly, Minecraft Me. As a reminder, we have an awesome community. Head over to our forums uh, where you can jump in and have different conversations about different things. That's what the, the forum's all about. Hey, one last thing real quick. Uh, you guys, if you have a chance, we are very, very close. If you head over to facebook.com uh, slash TV, right now we are at 492 people liking us. We are eight away from uh, making it to 500. So if you haven't liked us yet on Facebook, please do so. Facebook.com slash TV. That's the network. So that's, if you like what we're doing, please like us on Facebook.com slash TV. John, you're typing up a storm over there. Better be good. What are you talking about? Nothing. All right. He's he's signing up for Facebook so he can like <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> no. Yeah. Speaking of Facebook, no, we were talking about idi- Idiocracy. Oh, Idiocracy is a great yeah. movie. Yes. I don't know if we should watch that trailer, too, if I really want to hammer it home and get uh, taken <clears throat> offline. <laughs> I won't do it. All right, I'll, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and use my one Facebook interaction a year, and uh, now we're up to 493. By the way, here, here for the year. <laughs> yeah, that no, that was my oh. my one Facebook interaction that I I am willing to do per year. Uh, I, I liked that. Be, before we get out of here, uh, this is one of those. <laughs> uh, hold on here. I'm pulling it up oh. now. Uh-huh. Um, I'm pulling up a picture of it. Uh oh. So um, over the uh, past couple weeks ago, I picked up this is this is not uh, this is not the exact color of it. I can't find a color of it. Let me Why see don't you just tell tell us what it is? Well, here it is. It's a uh, I picked up a 20, uh, 2010 Sport Wagon TDI, and I'm loving it. I love this car. It's it's fun to drive. And it's got great storage space. It can hold a pinball machine. And that's, that's my. That's that's his defining th- uh, thing. And it gets incredible gas mileage. Can you put a pinball machine in it? Yes, sold. A GGTV <laughs> Monday Night Retribution. Oh, we should. <laughs> oh, I just got that. That's awesome. But yes, um, before we get out of here, um, here's here's a movie that you guys need to see, um, and we'll. 
you, you just need to see this movie. At the dawn of the 21st century, the army began a top secret experiment. Oh, Joe Bowers, our first subject for the human Are they going to remake this? Experiment. As you uh, know, no. this is highly classified. However, if successful, the one, we the one they did be barely got made. Indefinitely. However, the trial run was prone to human error. See you in a year. And Joe slept slightly longer than expected. Half a millennium, to be exact. From Mike Judge, creator of Office Space and Beavis and Butthead. Oh my God! Oh. Ah, oh. You want a bait? If you were the smartest person in the world, this goes in your mouth. This one goes in your butt. Oh and wait, second, that one this goes one, in your butt. This one goes in your mouth. And we're stuck with the dumbest people in history. If you have one bucket that holds two gallons, and another bucket that holds five gallons. How many buckets do you have? Two? <laughs> what would you do? Excuse me, um, I'm actually supposed to be getting out of prison. You're in the wrong line. I'm the smartest guy in the world? Says who? The IQ test you took in prison. You got the highest score in history. You've been smarter than President Camacho. Ladies and gentlemen, the prisoner of the America! <laughs> 2505. You got this guy. He's gonna fix everything. So you smile. The ordinary will be considered extraordinary. I thought your hair would be bigger. Idiocracy. For the smartest guy in the world, you're pretty dumb sometimes. All right, we should totally go watch that movie. It's coming out. It should soon. be mentioned that was made by Mike Judge. He was the director for that thing. The guy and did, Beavis uh, and Butthead. Beavis and Butthead and uh, King of the Hill. Hey Chase, right. why was the CD and drawer he, he, open down there? I'm sorry. Say again, John. I was looking. I looked at the PC down there. I'm like the CD drawer is open. That's oh, weird. it shouldn't be open. It it's, was. A, it's a cup holder. It's oh. a cup oh. holder. You're supposed to put Damn. your uh, Pepsi. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> put that back up. <laughs> John Kessler. You can follow him on Twitter at vw kenny. Uh, it's not fake. really him. It's fake. It's, it's not fake. real. Also, you can follow Mr. Joseph Falby on Twitter at Falby, F-A-L. That one's not a fake. B-E-Y. That's not a fake. That's real. <laughs> it's real. Should we look yeah, at what there Joe's... four lights. Yeah. Should we uh, look at what uh, Joe tweeted? We haven't looked it's at still, it, it. It's still, my, uh, it's still my, my one from Minecraft. All right, let's do that, shall we? Let's take a look. All right. All right. Why not? Yeah, go for it. All right, so here is, uh, Joe's, uh, here's Joe's Twitter, and his last tweet... <laughs> Is uh, was retweeted by Joe, uh, Jay Huckabee, by the way. Uh, why mm. is it that Minecraft-related projects <laughs> tend to have the worst documentation I've ever encountered? I'm looking at you, Phonic UK. <laughs> and he, uh, uh, and he replied. And he, he replied. I, I did. I did get a reply. Yeah. He goes, "You put time into a project, but don't set time to explain how it works." Sorry, but to me that is an ex- oh, that was somebody else. Phonic UK said, oh. documentation is expensive to get written, time and money-wise, but since it's largely on a wiki, please feel free to improve it. The problem is is you can't figure out how their software works because it's not documented enough to write documents that would help other people use it. <laughs> so it's like, I would love to update the wiki, but I can't get the software to work in the first place the way I want it to work, so I don't know what to put in the wiki to update it. Anyway, it's sort of a vicious circle. It's a vicious circle. It is. It really is. Um, and uh, and I, and you, uh, you, the reason why I can say it's the worst do- is I regularly work on Cisco gear, and they're notorious for bad documentation, and Minecraft stuff is worse. <laughs> Anybody who's ever had to do work on Cisco gear should. How's that new server come along, Joe? It's. It's just going. Ducky. Yeah. Just ducky. <laughs> if you guys want to, uh, please do so. You can follow me on Twitter at Nunes, N-U-N-E-S, and you can also follow the network on Twitter at GeekGamerTV. We do the show every Sunday evening, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 in the East at live.geekgamer.tv. Our next live show will be this Thursday evening for some Minecraft Me. That will be at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. East Coast time. I want to let everybody know that coming down the pipe in the future uh, will be uh, some uh, schedule changes a little bit uh, because I will be doing some traveling uh, to Pittsburgh for the Pinburg 2013 tournament, and that's in Pittsburgh, PA. And so we will not have a Minecraft me. I'm sorry. We will not have uh, some live shows. We will have some stuff pre-taped, uh, but we will not have some live shows coming up. But next, we will still have a show live on Thursday and next Sunday as well. Uh, so make sure you're around for that. I want to say a big shout out to everybody there at Ustream. And Lakeisha, thanks so much uh, for featuring us and uh, spreading the word on how awesome these guys are. 
not me. No, Joe and John. Those are the awesome guys. And our awesome community and chat room. Yes, those those are the awesome guys. Those are really awesome guys. Yes. They, they help the other awesome It's the guys. community. It's the community. All right, guys. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you guys again next week for another edition of Geek Gamer Weekly. For Joe Falby, John Kessler, I'm Chase Nunes. Thanks for watching. Until we all talk again, we are all silent. Say goodnight, Gracie. Good night, Gracie. Mike Judge. Game over, man! Game over! <laughs>